Although settings are mostly personal preference, having good settings that fit you and your playstyle is going to make the game so much easier. So, let's get right into it. We'll start with a couple general settings I recommend, then we'll get into camera settings, controller settings, and finally we'll end with a detailed look at some more in-depth settings about the input buffer and removing the FPS limit. I think no matter what camera settings you have, you'll want to turn camera shake off. And then I like to bring your attention to this nameplate scale. By default, it's at 100%, but personally, I like to crank this up to at least 150 to 200. It makes it easier to see your teammates who are passing plays and opponents behind the ball when you're performing a dribble so that you can know when to flick or make a move on the ball. One setting you should definitely turn on is hitting that subscribe button with the notification bell on. Doing this while smashing the like button is bound to increase your performance. Thanks! For camera settings, there is a general range that most players like to stick with, and let's go over what they are and why. Starting with our FOV, most players like to keep this at 110, with some going down towards 107 to get a better view of the ball. Then we have our distance and height. These two work hand in hand with distance affecting how far the car is away from the camera and height affecting how high the camera is. When it comes to these two, I highly recommend looking at some of the pro settings and trying out theirs with some minor adjustments. For example, when I started the game, I really liked squishy settings, but I would bump the distance and height up just a tiny bit, because if you're new to the game, you don't have the same game sense an experienced player might have to know where everything is or what's going on through game sense alone. So bumping up the height and distance from a pro's settings, just one or two ticks, can be really helpful in getting you more information. Stiffness is a tricky one. It affects how much your camera is allowed to move out of position. It can actually heavily affect what distance you should be running because the lower the stiffness, the further away your camera is allowed to go when you're moving quickly. So if you have a lower stiffness, then you can also have a lower distance since the camera will go out further as you speed up anyways. The higher the stiffness, the less the camera is allowed to move away from the center of your car. Personally, I found higher stiffness better for car control, making things like dribbling easier, but lowering the stiffness allows the camera to focus more on the ball and your surroundings. So personally, I switch back and forth between 0.45 and 0.7. Finally, we have our angle. This one highly depends on all the previous settings because you don't want a lower angle if your camera is too close to the ball. So for example, with a low distance and a high stiffness, your camera is going to stick close to the ball. So you'll have a hard time seeing over it if your angle is too low. But if you play a high distance and a medium to low stiffness, then you should have no problem moving the angle down to about minus three. The lower the angle, the better view of the ball you get. So you really want to try to find a balanced angle that lets you see the interaction between you and the ball clearly without losing too much sight of your surroundings. The remaining settings are less important and very much personal preference. It just refers to how quickly you're going to switch between ball cam and car cam and how much your right stick moves the camera. I hope with this quick guide you'll be able to find settings to help maximize your playstyle. And if you're interested in my settings, I'll keep them updated in the description below. For our controller settings, we'll start with our sensitivity and dead zones. With the sensitivity, this is a multiplier for your controller input, with the range going between negative 1 to 1. For example, if your joystick is halfway at 0.5 and your sensitivity is at 1, then following the equation, the game will recognize your input as halfway at 0.5. But if your sensitivity is at 2, for example, then moving your stick even halfway will result in a full input of 1, making the game think that you've pushed your stick all the way already. I find the most common range for this is anywhere between 1.2 to 1.5 for both the steering and aerial sensitivity. Dead zones refer to how far the stick must move before it actually affects a change in the input direction. For the controller dead zone, if you like a more rigid control over your car or if the controller has a bit of stick drift, you'll want to stay near the upper end of the average. While having a lower dead zone might be more difficult for you to control, it'll provide better feedback. The dodge dead zone refers to how far the stick must be pressed before the dodge is registered. For example, if your dodge dead zone is at 0.8, then anything less than this will be registered as a double jump instead of a dodge. This setting is really dependent on how quickly your controller moves the stick back to a neutral position. On older controllers where the stick doesn't move as quickly, I like to set this to a higher value to prevent unwanted backflips. The default binds aren't super great, so there are a couple changes I highly recommend. Starting with our scoreboard. It takes up one of the shoulder buttons, which is a huge waste. So I typically like moving this to the select button. Freeing up the left bumper or L1, most players like to move air roll to this. 
That way, we can actually free up one of our main face buttons by binding power slide to this as well, since you'll physically never have to press power slide and arrow at the same time. Also, moving power slide to a shoulder button makes it so much easier to boost while drifting. And finally, with the face button freed up, I highly recommend binding one of the directional air roll buttons to this instead. It doesn't matter if you do air roll left or right or if you try to fit both, but having at least one of the directional air roll left or air roll right buttons can make a lot of mechanics down the line easier. The following advanced settings are going to be mostly for our PC players, but I know parts of this should be relevant to console as well. So we'll start by mentioning that you should definitely be turning off VSync. Regardless of your console or PC, having this off is going to be a huge boost in reducing your input lag. Which brings us to talking about our input buffer. There are three main input buffers, default legacy, STS, and CSTS. The input buffer basically exists to allow your game time to register your input and handle the action. With each type of input buffer, there's a buffer value based on your connection and FPS, and a target buffer value, which your buffer tries to never go past. The default and STS input buffer has a default target value of 7, while the CSTS has a much lower target buffer of 4. So you might be thinking, CSTS is the best, right? Well, it's a little more complicated than that. So CSTS has a lower target buffer and is more consistently able to hit this buffer, but 4 isn't the best that you can get. When running default, you can easily sit at a constant 3 or 4, allowing your variable input buffer to go below what CSTS is going to get you. SDS, on the other hand, has an even more dependent relationship on your FPS and connection, allowing the input buffer to even go down to 2 occasionally. But STS is less stable and can easily backfire if your system and connection is not always consistent. In summary, here are the pros and cons of each one. SDS has the highest potential for the best input buffer there is, but it's fairly dependent on whether or not your specs are up to par. Default is our jack of all trades that is pretty fast and can handle a wide range of system specs. While CSTS is our most consistent input buffer, it doesn't rely as much on your hardware and connection and has the least number of input misses, but it also has the lowest potential for faster inputs. Depending on your setup, hopefully this can help you make an educated decision on which one will maximize your performance. And finally, we've made it to unlocking our FPS. For this to work, you'll have to have Bacchus mod, which unfortunately means this is PC only, and I'll have the link to Bacchus mod in the description below. With Bacchus mod open and Rockley closed, simply go to File, then open Bacchus mod folder. From here, go to the config folder and open the auto exec config file in Notepad. Type out this line FPS underscore max space zero, save and then close. And then the next time you open a broccoli with Bacchus mod open as well, you'll have your FPS unlocked. For me, I personally get to around 400 FPS and I'm sure you can get much higher with the newer graphics card. You might be wondering, but HK, why do I need 1000 FPS if my monitor is only 144Hz? For those who are unfamiliar, FPS refers to the amount of frames per second that your game is rendering, while the monitor refresh rate is the rate at which your monitor grabs these frames per second. So in an ideal world, say your monitor is at 10Hz, it would refresh 10 times per second requiring only 10 frames per second to get a new frame for the user every single update. But realistically, unless you're using some kind of sync with the monitor and graphics card, your monitor and FPS are updating asynchronously. And to a computer, one second is a very long time. So something like this might happen. Say your monitor is grabbing 10 frames per second, but the game ended up rendering most of those frames in the second half, leaving the first five frames of the monitor only updating twice. This is why to prevent this, you typically want around 50% or more FPS than your monitor refresh rate. Since if you have enough frames blasting per second, you reduce the risk of your monitor not having a new frame to update with on every refresh cycle. Alright guys, well I hope you found all that helpful. If you're interested, please join the Discord and feel free to at me there if you have any questions. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time.